morning, brothers and sisters. Brother Will here. Before I go any further, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, brothers and sisters, here I am again. You know me, I, I usually don't make videos like every third or fourth day. Um, but if you look back over the history of my channel, you'll, you'll see that the Holy Spirit kind of comes in waves. And like when he is revealing stuff and dreams and visions and words and uh, insights and understanding and unfolding his word, it kind of uh, just comes in waves. And even my, my whole YouTube, you could just see that, you know, over the course of uh, since 2020. Um, so that all being said, since my last video about Uranus with um, the 84 year cycle and leaving Aries uh, on second Passover, which is coming up this Thursday, May 23rd. So really watching that closely, not naming any dates, not calling any dates, but really watching it closely. Um, since I made that video on Thursday, there was like a 24 hour period where I had a dream. I, I heard the trumpet, which was a separate event than the dream. And then I got in this crazy accident. Um, it wasn't my fault at all. And as you see, I'm totally, praise the Lord, like unscathed, essentially. I mean, other than just like some sore soreness in my foot and back and stuff like that and neck in that area. But um, hopefully that'll go away soon. Um, so, uh, but yeah, but this accident, it was... I'm going to show you the photos of it because the Lord was absolutely speaking through this. The name of the person that hit me, the um, numbers on the back of the vehicle. It was a ginormous propane truck. I mean, this thing, like the entire bumper was solid steel. Um, so it was definitely, I definitely saw, you know, everything coming at me like it was coming straight at my face. Um, and the Lord stopped it. It was like, not, here I am, unscathed. So praise the Lord, all glory to our Father, and thank you, Lord, for your protection. Um, yes, just thank you for your protection, your safety, and your health, and everything else that you bless us with in this abundant life. So, um, so yeah, those three things happened. Um, I'm going to show you all the stuff about the accident on the screen because I want to break down the numbers and everything. Um, and I'm also going to, uh, there's a couple other things I'll show you. But So first, let me just start with, once I made the video, while it was uploading on Thursday, I'm just sitting there uh, in my bed, actually awake, like not asleep at all, sitting there, sitting up, in fact. And I hear, not externally, but internally, uh, have you ever heard like the sound of an orchestra warming up? So it wasn't an orchestra, it was the trumpet of the Lord, it was the... Like, but um, it was just internally very warm, I heard... Like it was warming up in the distance, okay? Um, and I, I texted Kevin immediately when this happened because that's pretty cool. I mean, I've had the dreams that I mentioned of the trumpet blast, which was a very intense dream um, way back in uh, 2020 when, again, that was another period where I had the Russian bells word, where I, heard, where I had the, you know, vision of the nuclear missile, where I had those seven dream vignettes, where there was like a lot of stuff that happened in 2020. Um, so it seems like this is another one of those periods where the Holy Spirit's doing stuff. So, um, so then the dream that I had, the dream was that night. So I made the video. I, I was still awake before I went to sleep and I heard that trumpet. And then I had this dream. So this dream, um, I don't think it necessarily speaks to rapture in any way. It's more, this is more for tribulation saints, more for the Jews that are going to be here during the tribulation because it's a full on AC type dream. So basically, uh, chickens are really, really awake this morning. Um, so there was a king snake, okay, in my dream. And I, I use the term two snakes loosely because I'm pretty sure it was the same snake as you'll see. It was the same snake that just kind of transformed. So if I say two snakes, I really mean the same snake. Um, so I'm in my garden, my vegetable garden, and there's a snake there. And it's a king snake. I know what a king snake looks like. It's black with the yellow bands. And... Um, so it was like coming up to me and like not intimidating or threatening at all. So I pick it up and the snake has a human tongue, very key, a human tongue and starts like licking my hand. Okay. Like, like a dog would, but not even like in a, not a dog that's like, you know, hyper, but just like a very gentle licking of the hand. So anyway, um, I, I take the snake and it is kind of just like coiled up around my arm and I take the snake and, um, I'm walking inside with it, but where I actually end up in is inside this Mediterranean-style 
house building with with like columns and everything else and um, there are all these rooms in it like it's huge and um, often these rooms though these people are like doing like weird rituals okay it was nothing that was like uh, good okay it was definitely like there's like pagan elements to it it was icky it was gross um, and so then I, th I feel like when I go in, I, I, this, I lose the snake for a second, but then I don't, I don't see it. But then when I see it again, and I'm holding it, I pick it up, and it's completely transformed. Still a king snake, still black and white, but the head now has fangs, and the head has all these nails that are in the head, and, but, but they're like underneath the skin. So like you can see the outline of the nail, um, and there's maybe 8 to 12 of them, I, I couldn't remember the count. But they're like coming down through its head and then like the fangs are nails also so all these nails are coming through so um at this point you know it's i'm not like i'm not like disturbed by this or freaked out by it but I, i'm definitely knowing like this is not a good thing this is like you know we need to get rid of this snake so i go to like take it outside i feel like i you know parts of this are foggy because i couldn't remember if i want to just go like crush it or throw it out it was one of the two things but on my way to getting rid of it, it, it does just like bite me on the hand um, with the fangs, but yet it, it didn't really, there's no like ill effects of it. I was unscathed by it really, which is like a, I mean, it drew a couple little drops of blood that I just kind of wiped off and, and was fine. So it didn't really harm me, but, um, and then like I said, I, I couldn't remember if I tossed it out of the building or, or took it outside and stomped on it, but all I know is the final image in my head was the heads was the was the head of snake all crushed and mangled like the the uh, nails are all like bent and just like he's like just heads crushed. Um, so that was that was a dream. So um, I as I always say with you guys, if you get additional kind of insights, go ahead and pray. You know, while if you want to pause the video, and you can certainly leave those in the comments. Um, I sent this to uh, the text chain with Mike and Tony and Kevin and. Kevin had some very interesting insights. So my initial response, pretty straightforward, right? I mean, um, if you haven't paused it yet, because I, I like I like you to pause it and then like pray, so that my interpretation doesn't influence you. But um, so, uh, but it, but it seems pretty straightforward, right? So this snake is the AC. It comes like a king, a king snake. We know who the king of kings is, is Jesus. But it was a king snake, okay? The tongue of a man. So very cunning very deceptive very um it was like buttering me up right like uh, like you know wanting me to take it inside and wanting me to take it as a as a pet or something okay um and so but then now we don't have a time period in the dream but when we get inside <clears throat> the building i said mediterranean style house but it could have very easily symbolized a temple right because there's columns all through it corridors rooms so forth definitely like people doing weird pagan stuff like um you know that's like completely against the lord um definitely not worshiping the god of israel isaac and, and jacob and definitely not worshiping the lord jesus um and so then once inside once in the temple we know it's going to eventually happen with the antichrist right then he shows his true colors then he does have fangs then he is dangerous then he um, has, you know, the, I interpreted the nails as, as crowns because, you know, a nail has a head on it and then a, a pokey point. So I interpreted them as crowns, but like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't count them. So um, we know that the beast is going to have a certain amount of heads and crowns and everything. So that could be what that was referring to, but I like what Kevin said even more. Um, and then he bit me, but didn't then phase me. And then of course we know how the enemy ends up crushed outside. <laughs> um, so it was all very straightforward. So then my question was, you know, wh what was this dream for? Who was this dream for? And Kevin made the great point, you know, and I've said before on the channel as well, you know, so many times, you know, dreams are not even for us. And I don't even think I was myself in the dream. I think I was a representative of either the Jewish nation or, you know, the tribulation saints or who have you. I was representing someone else, not myself. Um, and that's been, that's happened in other dreams too. So, um, and, and so Kevin said a couple things. One of the things he said was, you know, a morning star uh, is a mace type 
medieval weapon that has nails all on the end of it, okay? But it's a staff type thing, like, you know, Moses, when he threw his staff down, became a snake. So, um, in the morning star, uh, Lucifer is referred to as the morning star, and then there's Jesus, who's the bright morning star, right? Um, depending on what version you use, it says day star, morning star, what have you. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> his point, and if you're, if you're listening to this after the rapture, if you're listening to this during the tribulation, <clears throat> and you didn't go on the rapture. This, I think, is the main takeaway of the entire dream. Because he said, you know, the snake was able to bite you, was able to inflict some kind of damage to you, but it could not kill you. And as Jesus says, do not fear those who can take away, you know, I'm butchering this verse, but do not fear those who um, can uh, take away this life, but fear those who can take away the second death, or the second life. What am I? I completely butchered that verse, but the point is, don't fear the first death, fear the second death. And so, um, you know, basically, if you're a tribulation saint, there will be persecution to the point of death, but ultimately, the Antichrist can't harm you. The Antichrist can't harm you for more than a split second, for more than just a little, little uh, bite, okay? Because in the, in the grand scheme of eternity, in the big picture of things, it's going to be a moment and then you're going to have eternal life. Okay, so this goes to the mark of the beast thing. Do not, for momentary pleasures of this world, or just even survive so you can buy stuff at the store, do not take the mark of the beast. Because it's better to reject the mark and have a little bit of, uh, you know, discomfort. Um, and actually, tribula tribulation, it's going to be not just a little bit. It's going to be hard. Don't get me wrong. I can't even imagine. But um, it's better to endure that and have an eternity of abundant life than to take the mark, have a couple of years of not even comfort, really, um, and then have uh, the second death for eternity. So anyway, that was the main point of the dream, I believe. Um, if you have any additional insights, please put them in the comments below. Um, okay, uh, I think that was all I wanted to say. Now I'm going to turn the video off and show you everything about because please stick around, because the greatest point of everything that happened last Thursday slash Friday was what was on the back of this propane truck, the numbers, and how incredibly encouraging they are for where we are and um, what point uh, in God's calendar and everything else, and how close we are. Because there's this element of God shutting the door, there's this element of Jubilee year, there's... Um, another verse that I hadn't really considered before that backs up a pre-trib rapture. All of those are on the back of this truck okay? <clears throat> in these numbers. So stick around, you'll see that. I did just want a, a quick reminder based on the shutting of the door thing is that, um, you know, we are in the second month. Um, the door was shut or, you know, the flood, flood began on the 17th day of the second month. Now I know, depending on whether you're using the religious calendar or the secular calendar of the Jewish people, um, you know, the second month could be the eighth month. So, um, nevertheless, I think the numbers are still absolutely applicable to this situation because we don't know which type and shadow the Lord could use here. You know, if, if the flood was truly the eighth month, what is now the eighth month, maybe the whole reason it was changed is because the second month is when this crazy other destruction is going to happen. So either way, in Genesis, it says the second month, 17th day. So we're coming up on that if the, if the, 14th day of second Passover is the 23rd, then that would put 24th, 25th, 26th. Um, so yeah, we're talking about basically, uh, that's 15, 16, 17. So we're talking about um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, something like that would be the, the 17th day of the second month. Anyway, enough of me uh, talking right now. I'm going to turn this off and show you all the amazing things on the screen. Okay, brothers and sisters, so here is the photo of my car. This happened on Friday. Um, again, I'm fine other than just, you know, kind of classic accident soreness type stuff. But um, I don't want to focus on me here. I want to focus on what the Holy Spirit showed me through this. Because like I said, Thursday, Friday, um, they're both really just so much happened. So um, that's what my car looked like. Now here is what hit me. It's a propane truck, okay? Um, really big truck. You can't really see how long it is from this image, but, um, anyway, so I was compelled to take this photo. Um, and of course the Lord immediately like started pointing out numbers to me. And, um, what's interesting is, and, and the guy who hit me was super nice. Um, I'm only saying this name just because it 
feeds into what I'm about to show you. So Isaiah, the Lord is my salvation, is what it means, was the person that hit me. That was his name. And um, so immediately I was drawn to these first big numbers here, right there in the middle, 5701. First I looked for 1075, but there was no Isaiah 1075. But Hebrew reads from right to left, so 5701. Isaiah's, Isaiah 5701, and then that little two down there. So the scripture 5701, and by the way, well, yeah, so let me just get there. So how about this for a pre-trib rapture verse? The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. So now, of course, I, I totally realize the first part of this verse is talking about why, why do the righteous die, right? The righteous perisheth and no man layeth at heart. But the second part of that verse, <laughs> the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds. So to me, this was... Um, just an awesome pre-trib rapture verse uh, that I had never, I mean, I'd read this verse before, I'm, I'm sure, probably many, many times, but I'd never seen it in this context. So um, anyway, hope that blesses you like it did me. Coming back to the truck, though, that wasn't it. Um, I sent that verse uh, to Mike and Tony and Kevin on Friday, but then today the Holy Spirit took me back to these other three numbers here. So we have 923 and 674. Okay. Now, if you followed my channel for any period of time, those dates are going to be huge. They're like, like we did so much uh, study on those dates, or specifically the 923. You might be thinking of the Revelation 12 sign. However, that's not what this is referring to in this context. All right, journey with me. Come over here. 923. If those of you who remember that I'm, I fully believe we're still in a Jubilee year that started back in the fall of 2023, okay? But 923 was September 1923 the mandate of Palestine when the Jewish people were basically, when the British government essentially gave the Jewish people their land, okay? Um, now we know an, the nation came about in 1948, but I don't want to rehash all this because if you if you watched all of my mandate of Palestine videos and the fact that we're in a jubilee year because of this, because the count of the 50 years started in 20, in sorry, 1923, which then takes you to 1973, which... Glad we segued to that, because here we go. June 1974, 674. So we just had 923, and this is 674. This is the 17th government Israel formed after the resignation of Golda Meir. Remember Golda from that video. Again, her name means gold, means which is the 50th anniversary, okay? So um, this... It takes place right after, essentially right after they won the uh, Yom Kippur War that started again in, in 73, which was 50 years after um, 1923. And then, of course, 2023 began the next 50-year Jubilee year, which we are still in because 74 is 50 years from 2024, okay? So those two, let me take this off real quick. So those two numbers right here okay right at the bottom okay so 923 and 674 but i'm not done with this so let's come over here and you'll see so i put this in the date time between two dates and you've got 50 years and eight months but 50 years is 600 months so it's a total of 608 months um so a couple things that are very uh, encouraging about this. Because first of all, again, this is another confirmation for me that 2023 
to 2024 is the whole year is the Jubilee year. And that, you know, in June, essentially, we're still only eight months into the Jubilee year, and we have four months still to go, which June, July, August, September takes you right to Feast of Trumpets in October. Okay, and if those of you who watch Repo Man, Mike, he's mentioned, you know, four years and then harvest, sorry, four months and then harvest, but the harvest is right now. So the harvest is right now, not four months from now. So um, he's been making that point, which I think is very key. But let's focus in on the 608 because it gets even better. 608 in Strong's. To shut fast or completely shuts. Close up, shut up. What have we been talking about with regard to the fact we're in the second month? As you know, I'm looking hard at second Passover this Thursday, May 23rd, 523. Um, but but what have we been talking about is about to close. The arc door, right? So look at this. There is only one occurrence of this word, of this Greek word, one occurrence. And that is Luke 13, 25. Hath shut. Okay, but let's look at the entire scripture. When once the master of the house is risen up, and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. The door is about to be shut. That is, I believe, so, again, let me cycle back through all of these. This one accident, and again, I don't take something like, you know, getting hit by a propane truck lightly, especially given the time that, that we're in and, and the calling that the Lord has called me to. So when this happened, and we had these numbers here, and they all amount to basically amazing words from the Lord. Isaiah 57, 1 and 2, talking about the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. And then we have those dates that confirm to me that, that we're in a Jubilee year, okay? And that we have four months left of this Jubilee year. And that the rapture does line up with a Jubilee. And actually, I should take this moment because this is something that I want to talk about. Um, I've been meaning to talk about this for a while. Let me just put it on the scripture here while I say this. So um, I know that uh, a lot of people are... The main reason that people question if this is a jubilee year or not is because they go, well, you know, when Jesus returns, the second coming and the beginning of the millennial kingdom and everything, that should be the jubilee year. So this can't be. But what we have to remember with jubilees, and this is like a, a really big point I've been wanting to, to, to mention, I've been forgetting until now, thank you, Lord, is that when they came into the land is when you start the count, okay? That was 1923. That's when, they, that's when they came into the land. 1973 was the first Jubilee. 1923, 24 is the, is the, is the second Jubilee. Sorry, yeah, first Jubilee, second Jubilee. But then what's going to happen is if, if everything stayed status quo and the Jews were in the land and everything else, then yes, you would just continue to count another 50 years. But what is about to happen, if you remember my timeline and the tribulation and everything that's talked about in Daniel and Revelation, especially Revelation chapter 12, we know there that the woman is going to have to flee. Jesus actually says in, in the Olivet, Olivet Discourse, uh, you know, flee to the, to the hills or what have you. Um, you know, pray that your flight is not in winter. So um, they're going to have to leave the land because of the AC and everything that he's going to do when he sets up his, you know, quote unquote, little K kingdom. And, um, you know, so basically the Jews are going to have to leave. So that is going to be the case until the end of the tribulation. So that then when Jesus does come back at the end and sets up the millennial kingdom, it will start all over again. That will be a brand new, everything, everything will be made new. So that's why, um, these counts with the 50 and the 50 are totally 100% valid from 1923 to 1973 and from 73 to 2023, which of course goes into 2024, which is what it, the point I was just making. Okay, so back to this dream now. So that was that was everything from the accident. 
back to the dream I was telling you about, where those two snakes, okay, so the two snakes, and I fully believe, um, and as Kevin was, you know, when he was talking about what he was getting from the interpretation as well, you know, it's it absolutely speaks of um, the enemy, right? Uh, the Antichrist specifically in that dream. Kevin pointed out that the nails coming out of the snake's head, um, that, you know, it's basically he was getting the image of a morning star, like the weapon, a morning star. Okay. Which is an old medieval weapon with, um, nails coming out of the head. And it's a straight, um, kind of club like instrument that, um, can look kind of like a staff. Okay. Which we know Moses, a staff became a snake. Anyway, what's interesting there, there are two, um, two, uh, places in scripture that refer to the morning star and they're completely night and day. All right. Now this is where K KJV doesn't actually say morning star, but several other versions do. But this is talking about Lucifer. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? So it says most versions when it says, O son of the morning, it says bright morning star or, or actually says, uh, O morning star. Um, so that was another kind of confirmation of what, you know, the, the image of the snake is with the, with the nails and the dream. But then also, um, we have also a more, this is Jesus. Okay. This is second Peter. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Okay. This is day star, but again, several versions say morning star. So we have day star here, and we have essentially day star here. And for me, what this is a, just another kind of confirmation of is how um, Lucifer, specifically in the form of the AC, is going to come as the Messiah, right? It's another reminder of the fact that he comes not just as a ruler, not just as us Christians who recognize him as the Antichrist, but everyone who's not a Christian, specifically the Jewish people in the first three years of, of signing of the covenant that, that starts Daniel's 70th week, they're going to think he is the Messiah. Okay. So, um, that's a, that's a key point here. Um, and especially if you're watching this video after the fact, after the rapture and the tribulation has begun, just understand that, um, you know, there's lots of people who still believe, quote unquote, the Messiah hasn't come yet, meaning Jesus. And there's several people who are expecting the Messiah to come and set up a, a kingdom. Um, but it's, it's going to be the Antichrist first. Okay. All of the revelation stuff has to happen before Jesus comes back and sets up his actual righteous millennial kingdom. Okay. Um, and then just one more thing that I, I had on here, actually, <laughs> Um, speaking of the day star, it reminded me, I've never really talked about this on the channel, but, um, one of the things I do, and, and as you know, like this is a ministry for me, this channel is completely just a calling for me and I don't monetize. I don't do anything. I'm not even trying to, you know, get any kind of, uh, financial support of any kind from this channel. This is completely a ministry. I'd much rather just have, uh, treasures in heaven. So keep that in mind. Um, and that's why I never really bring this up. But since I was talking about the day star, I just want to say um, one of the things that I do uh, is um, I, I write Christian fantasy. OK, and this is book two of the Whispering World series that I write. So if you're interested in that, um, you can see up at the top of your screen there, the is the is the website. So if you want to check it out, I, I figured this is a, a great time to just mention it because of that dream and because, hey, time short. So um and that's book two, The Day Star. The first book is Tears of Alphaga, which is a combination of the word Alpha and Omega and represents God the Father. So um, if you like Narnia and um, Lord of the Rings and those kind of things, then this Christian fantasy series might be for you. But again, enough of that. I just wanted to um, mention it since I was talking about The Day Star and I realized I haven't really mentioned it on this channel ever before. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about who I am outside of uh, Worship and Watch. Uh, okay. I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about. So yeah, it's been a really just between Thursday and Friday of this last week, basically from the moment I released that last video about, 
um, Uranus and the 84 years and looking everything pointing to, um, you know, second Passover. The moment I released that video, I had that trumpet sound like maybe an hour later or 30 minutes later. And then that night I had the dream. And then the very next morning, the, you know, propane truck hit me. So within, within like a really less than 24 hour period, it was like a 12 hour period, all those things happened. So I, I, you know, I've been kind of uh, just gathering myself after a crazy weekend of, you know, not having a car and that sort of thing. But, um, and yeah, if you would just keep, keep in prayer, just, uh, that the Lord for whatever time we have left here, heck, maybe hopefully we're out of here in two days. But if, if not, and I'm still here for another week or couple weeks or months or however long that the Lord would just, uh, provide a new vehicle for, uh, a family and me, that'd be great. I'd appreciate those prayers, brothers and sisters. So that's all that we have for this video. Um, the door is about to be shut, guys. If you do not know Jesus, if you have not confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the time is so short. But just take a moment, allow Jesus to ask you, who do you say I am? He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. Admit you're a sinner. Admit that you cannot save yourself. Understand that God provided a way for you to be reconciled to your creator for eternity. And that way, the only way is Jesus. He came and lived a perfectly sinless life. He died on the cross in your place. And he rose again from the dead on the third day to prove that he is the almighty God and that he holds the keys of life and death eternally. And so just, just call out to him, call out to him and say, and just admit you're a sinner and ask him to uh, forgive you and to to come into your life and and you will be born again and he will if you, if the rapture hasn't happened yet you will go on the rapture and um e even more than that even in this life not only eternal life but in this life you will have the freedom and the uh reconciliation to god and you will have the holy spirit come in and dwell you um it's the it's the greatest decision you could ever make so again the door is still open in this moment, but it is going to be shut soon, brothers and sisters, future brothers and sisters. So I pray that you would just come to Jesus. Um, yeah, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. All right, um, I will leave it there for this video, brothers and sisters, um, as we always say on this channel and everything we say and do, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. God bless you. Much love.